Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we are going to call the scalar product. Okay. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can actually talk about this. It is either going to be called the scalar or dot product, or more infrequently also called the inner product. So let's go back and think about all the things that we did in terms of operations and what we applied to vectors because this is really going to be the last operation that we're going to look at for this particular unit of study. So let's review. Remember that at the beginning we talked about all the different vector operations that we're going to look at. One was addition, scalar multiplication. Here's that last one which is called the scalar or dot product, the vector or cross product, and projections. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of focus in on what the result is. Okay. Remember that what we said is that if we go ahead and we take any two vectors and if we add any two vectors, the result is always going to be a resulting vector. Okay. In the same respect, if I go ahead and take a scalar and I multiply it to a vector, then the, pro then the result is a vector. Now, with the scalar or the dot product, which is why it's called a scalar product, the result is actually going to be a scalar. Okay, so that's going to be absolutely essential for you to remember, and that's why it's named that way. Now, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about why it's named the dot product as well. Now, with regards to the vector, the cross product is going to come out with the vector. We're going to look at this in the higher level course. And with the projections, you can either have a scalar or a vector result based upon what you're looking for. But again, this is going to come out later. Okay, so what we're going to focus on right now is just the scalar or dot product. Okay, so here's what we have basically. Let's say, for example, we have two two-dimensional vectors, and let's go ahead and call them A and B. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and take a look at also their geometric representation. And notice that both of these vectors are going to be in standard position because we've changed it into its column form. So what we can do then is we can say then that A dot B, and that's the reason for the dot product, A dot B is going to be defined in this way. It is going to be defined as the magnitude of A times it by the magnitude of B times it by the cosine of theta. That's going to be its geometric interpretation. Or you can also find out what the dot product or the scalar product is by taking A1 times it by B1 plus A2 times it by B2. And that's going to be an algebraic interpretation. Now, take a look at both of these results of what we have by this product here is we're coming out with a number is a number. Okay, so that's why we said here that the scalar or dot product is actually going to be providing you with a scalar result. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at a more specific example because we need to know exactly what the scalar product is actually used for. Here's the example. It says, let's say, for example, that the vector A is going to be 1, 2 and the vector B is going to be 3, 1. And so I went ahead and Try to make that as accurate as possible there for us. So then if I take the scalar or dot product of A and B, then this is going to be the magnitude of A times it by the magnitude of B times it by the cosine of theta is equal to 1 times it by 3 plus 2 times it by 1. So notice that we got the square root of 5, the square root of 10, cosine theta is equal to 3 plus 2. So we know that the cosine of theta is equal to 5 over the square root of 50. And then notice that we can actually go ahead and solve for theta. There you go. That is the primary purpose for the scalar product. It's to be able to tell us what the angle will be between the two vectors. So remember that regardless of where the vectors are, so long as the magnitude and the direction are maintained, then we can move it wherever we want. Well, by putting them into the column form here, we put it into standard position. And then we can find out exactly what that angle is between those two particular vectors. So that's going to be the primary purpose of the scalar or dot product. Now, of course, what we want to take a look at as well is the three-dimensional case because we deal with both two-dimensional vectors as well as three-dimensional vectors. And notice that the scalar product is exactly the same except for we just have one more component in the k direction. 
So we have the vector a being a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, the b vector being b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3. Notice the exact same geometric result that we have here with regards to the 2 and 3 dimensional cases. And notice that the only difference with the algebraic interpretation is that we need to go ahead and also add this part here. But then again, notice that what we have is we have a number equaling a number. Again, we can solve for cosines similarly in almost the same way as we did there. Okay, so we now know, just to kind of wrap things up, that the scalar or dot product between two vectors is going to provide us with a scalar and the primary reasons for coming out with this scalar is because if you equate the geometric and the algebraic interpretation of the scalar product, you're actually going to be able to find the angle between those two vectors. Okay, so being that we're talking about angles between two vectors and how that's actually provided to us by the dot product, couple of questions for you. What is the value of a dot b if theta is either 0 degrees or 180 degrees or what if it's 90 or 270 degrees? And so that will be something for you to think about and for something that we'll answer in class the next time that we meet. Okay, so there you go. Everything with regards to the scalar dot or inner product and we'll see how we do with some of the problems that we have and let's find those angles that are between two vectors. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.